Mike coming? Yeah, he's coming. I guess we could we could start. Uh, uh, could we rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Okay. Good evening, everyone. A uh, couple announcements prior to getting into the meat of our meeting. Uh, Sal, you want to go over the first one? Uh, sure. Monroe Marketplace, currently in its fifth week at the gym at Sacred Heart. Um, sold out of space until now, until Christmas. It's been an incredibly successful event, I feel. Um, if you haven't been there, please stop down and support. It's a lot of local craft vendors uh, that are kind of affected badly by COVID and they, they have no outlets other than this and it's been extremely, extremely successful. Uh, and, uh, and all the proceeds go to the, uh, go to the church. So if you can stop down, it's at the gym at Sacred Heart. Friday night is five to eight, Saturday 11 to seven and Sunday 10 to four. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Toys for Military Tots, if you came in, you, you saw in the foyer, it's, uh, our community has really been generous, so it's nice to see. Uh, that's going to end next Monday. Uh, if anyone has toys, I know the flyer says December 14th, that's the last day for drop-off, but if you can get them here by Friday, because I'm supposed to go out there first thing in the morning on Monday, bring all the... Uh, gifts that we have out there. Uh, I'm supposed to meet in Warwick. So just, just an idea, just to show you how, you know, so uh, Mike Martucci uh, was uh, uh, elected the, the new center out, Warwick, uh, Deer Park, that area. Uh, so he took, he took $2,000 out of his uh, charitable foundation and went around with Steve Newhouse and uh, a couple other people, and they spent the $2,000 on Small Business Saturday uh, in stores uh, throughout the county, not just in the Warwick area. <coughs> yeah, so that was a nice, nice gesture. Uh, the other thing, uh, Village of Harriman has a hat and glove drive. That's wrapping up on Wednesday. Uh, they were extremely happy so far. I met with Mayor Welly this afternoon, uh, and I'm sorry, this morning. And uh, he was extremely happy at the response they've received already. And if you have any, uh, you know, time to go out and grab a pair of gloves and a hat, uh, do so by Wednesday. So that's all good. Did you have anything else on economic development or everything's wrapped up? Or? Everything is held down pretty tight because uh, all the funds, state, federal, and everything else is held down pretty tight. So we're just waiting things to... Uh, to open up right now, we've we've got a number of things being developed, but I don't want to talk about them until they, yeah. till they get further developed. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, anything to add, Mary? No, nothing. All right. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to open up the town board meeting of December seventh, twenty twenty. I'll second. Call the question. Ingham I. Cologne I. Cardone I. Scancarello I. Again I. <laughs> All right. So moved. There he is. There he is. All right. Just say, just say hi, Mike. Oh. <laughs> hi. That's an I from McGinn, Mr. McGinn. Yeah. Councilman McGinn. Yes. No need to do that. How you doing, Mike? Up, pal? Good. How are you? Everyone good? Good. Sorry about that. All we're right. No, it's all right. We're all, we're all busy. All right. So uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, under public hearings to open up the public continuation of public hearing for proposed local law number three, amendment to chapter 57 of the town code to regulate rental properties and transient housing. On a second. Call the question. Ingham I. Cologne I. Cardone I. Ancarello I. Good night. Okay. 
All right. Uh, anybody sign up to speak? Anybody want to speak? No? Okay. So, come on, come on up, Ilya. So what? I'll turn on, you gotta you gotta turn turn on that mic, mic well. on. <laughs> there, there you go. go. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thanks for coming down again. Sure. Appreciate I'm happy it. Happy to. Last, uh, last we left it, I think that we were gonna. Ha someone was gonna reach out to us. We're in charge of that little working group that we did uh, <laughs> after Thanksgiving. Um, we haven't heard from you guys, so we're just going to keep coming. We'll, we'll yeah, no, it, was, it wasn't It was wasn't anything other than there was craziness no, going on in other areas. That's fine. So if, if you want to try to uh, set up a meeting for next week, we okay. can do that. Okay. I have no problem. All right, great. Problem doing that. You guys said you're available not in the day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, yeah, yeah. We're, we're on the job during the day, but we, we can do Zooms. And, I mean, we could also do something yeah. during lunch. If yeah, we could do, yeah we, we could do Zoom. All okay. right. Yeah. I could That's do Zoom, good. Mike. You could do Zoom, right? Yeah. All right. But what? As far as like evening, if it was a face to face, what what time? Would, like after six or so, or I got a se seven. Seven. Yeah. After yeah. seven. Yeah, I know yeah, it's tough. Week. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah it's tough. We could do that, that too. There. Yeah. But you know, why, why don't we shoot for Zoom for this for next week, and then uh, okay. and then we'll take it from there. Okay. Great. You know. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good. Yeah. No, everything was good. I'm honest. I, I haven't done anything since the last meeting on it, so yeah. I, I don't and want. And we're you not going to do anything on it either. So don't 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 yeah. feel like yeah. we're going to. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, and yeah. and I we, will tell we you. We need your input. Yeah. So I, I, I yeah. will tell you that you know there's there's a situation that has uh, come up uh, uh, in the Round Lake Park area, which uh, has been extremely detrimental so much so that uh, w one of the residents there that live right next door they, they sold the house the moving van showed up today so yeah it, it it's an airbnb but it's it's an airbnb that is just a party house you know yeah uh and and i i would I, let's let's uh let's talk Let's talk tomorrow, all right? Yeah. Enough right now. Yeah, all right? Yeah, like Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, like usually like 1 o'clock is when you kind of have a, a bit of a break. Yeah. So like 1 to 2 is still usually pretty good. All right, yeah. great. Well. Is it on? That's all right. That's all right. All right, uh, so uh, I'll make a motion to keep open the continuation of the proposed uh, local law number three public hearing, amendment to chapter 57 of the town code to regulate rental properties and transient housing for January 11th, 2021 at 7 p.m. or immediately thereafter. I'll second. Call the question. King of my. Cardone, aye. Cardone, aye. Skankarello, aye. Good night. Okay. Uh, motion to open up the continuation of the public hearing for proposed changes to Article 14 of the Town of Monroe Zoning Local Law. I'll make that motion. Second. I'll second. Call the question. Being a mic. Cardone, aye. Cardone, aye. Cancarillo, aye. Can I? Okay, so moved. All right. Mike, any uh, follow-up? I know, um, see, I think you were also CC'd on that, e or much of the email was to you from uh, uh, from our town planner, uh, Max Stock, basically saying that they expect to have uh, a draft to us by the end of the week. Uh, so that that's good news, and uh, so we'll take a look at that draft and have some discussions. Mary, obviously, um, you know, we'll have we'll have some time between now and the next meeting to really kind of hone in on some of it. So that we're, uh, you know, ready to kind of go when when we're back to that first meeting in January, which right. is January fourth. Well, that's the reorg meeting. Oh, all right. But so it'd be the it'd meeting be January eleventh. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah. So that's that's good. It looks like we're moving forward on that. Ward, that's good news for you as well. We'll hopefully uh, by the eleventh we'll have something that's good to go. After public input, of course. Thank you. Uh, okay, I'll make a motion to keep open the continuation of public hearing for proposed changes to Article 14 
for the Town of Monroe Zoning Local Law on January 11th uh, at 7 p.m. or immediately thereafter. Bring them to second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cardone, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. Good night. Okay, so moved. Okay, we have a, a, a general fund abstract. Uh, and the total off. Uh, yeah, so, so the abstract is, is broken down into two parts. It's checks 26534-26454, totaling $890,987.45. So can we get a, a approval for... That, that well that's the first part of abstract 2027 and the second part uh, is basically for checks 317 to I'm sorry wires containing checks 317 to 327 totaling seven million four hundred sixty two thousand five dollars and thirty cents and those were just uh, for account wires, if you look at the last page, 404, relating to uh, the band payoffs, highway trucks, and the all mine payoff. That's the, the bulk of it. Uh, that represents probably about 95% of it. Uh, and it was, it was essentially uh, the wires, wires that came in that we had a pay off after the bonding was received, so. You want two separate motions for that? No, no, we could do one. Okay. Because it's, uh, it's, the abstract number is 20-27. I just wanted to break it down for everyone. You want me to make the motion? The abstract's 20-27, that's the escrow, so that's a. You want one for the checks and the wire transfers? Checks and the wire transfers is abstract 20-27. In other words, all together. I thought the abstract 20-27 was the one for the escrow accounts, no? Oh, the escrow is 20-17. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my, my two and one. <laughs> I wrote sloppy, sorry. All right, no problem. Thanks, thanks for clarification, Marion. Okay, so uh, I'll make the motion. On a second. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cardone, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. Good night. So moved. Okay. Uh, abstract uh, item 5.2 on under order of the claims. 5.2 is the abstract 20-17 containing one check 1943, which totals $6,532.35, which was made out to McGooey Hauser and Etzel for engineering done on Smith Farm. Make that motion. Second. Well, question. Being a my. Cardone, aye. Cardone, aye. Oh, aye. Good night. Okay. Uh, budgetary transfers. So we have uh, abstract 20 06, which are budgetary transfers. There are one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, nine transfers, uh, which total $11,271.88. And the date of that audit was on uh, today, December 7th. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion. Second it. Question? King am I. Pardon, I. Pardon, I. Good night. Okay, so moved. All right, next up. is uh, return of escrows from planning and ZBA. And first one is to Catherine Vito. Uh, the amount is $1,508.16. 
Uh, final payment has been made to uh, Ferrick Nugent McCartney, and this was a Zoning Board of Appeals case. Uh, so that was the balance in their escrow account for Project Z049-2020. So do we have a motion to return that? I'll, I'll make that motion. Hold on a second. Call the question. Ing am I. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Micro, aye. Again, aye. Okay, so moved. I did. Mike. Next up is uh, another zoning board of appeals return of escrow to Con Kudo. That was for $1,323.76 for Project Z03520019. Final payment has also been made to Farrak Nugent McCartney. And again, that's $1,323.76. I'll make that motion. Mary, motion. Mike, second. Call the question. Bing, am I? Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. Good night. Okay, so moved. Item 7.3 is J squared return of escrow. Uh, that was for Project Z04-72020. Or, hmm. yeah, it's, it's probably five, I think. Oh, no, that's Catherine Vito, right? You want the amount? Yeah. yeah. yeah one thousand five hundred and eighty dollars and four cents. No, that's a different one. See, that's... Oh, I see what you're saying. It was... Okay, that don't belong there. Okay. Uh, able that. That's why we have all these numbers with them, so that, that's good. So, yeah, we're going to have to table that. All right, so let's, uh, can we table the J squared return of escrow? I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Call the question. King am I. Cardone, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarello, aye. Okay, so moved. Okay, the, the, last, the last one then is uh, Kim Lacerdo return of escrow, $1,580.04. That's project number Z050-2020. Uh, all final payments have been made also to Farrak Nugent McCartney. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Call the question. King am I. Cardone, aye. Cardone, aye. Skankarello, aye. Aye. Okay, so moved. Uh, item 8.1, the acceptance of minutes from the November 16th, 2020 meeting. Make that motion. Cologne a second. Call the question. Bing am I. Cologne aye. Cardone aye. Hello, aye. Good night. Okay, so move. All right. New business. Uh, item eight, uh, nine point one. Uh, part time account clerk in the finance department. Uh, so Lindsay actually uh, worked uh, up until this past Saturday it was the last day that she worked and it was uh, relative to uh, uh, town clerk, and she did some, she had one project that was still up in the air, and she finished it up this, this past Saturday. So uh, we had reached out to a couple people, just trying to fill the gap part-time until we're able to go through the civil service project uh, pr uh, process uh, and grab somebody full-time. So, uh, we interviewed a gentleman named Nicholas Lombardi for the position of part-time account clerk. He has been approved by civil service uh, at the Orange County Department of Human Resources, uh, effective 1119. His rate of pay is $16.50. He's a very bright young man. Uh, he's 
currently at Drew University, obtaining his Master's of Science in Finance. He's done what we're asking him to do and more uh, in the past, so uh, I, I would like to make a motion to uh, approve Nicholas Lombardi as a part-time account clerk. Uh, and, that motion. and just to add to the discussion, it's probably going to be through like June or July when his uh, master's is completed. So it, it, it helps it helps it helps Roberta and Helen in there because they they they've been a little little overwhelmed the last couple of weeks Absolutely. losing a full time player in there. So as long as we're not paying for his masters, that's fine. No, <laughs> no, we're not. We're not. Okay. No problem. Call, call the question then. Bingham I. Colon I. Cardone I. Agrello I. McGinn I. Okay. Uh, I'm going to jump jump uh, out of the uh, order here because uh, I know we have our legislator, uh, Mr. Pete Tui. Pete, if you want to come up. Pete, you're looking very dapper tonight. Hey, yes. How you doing? How you doing? Pete, you guys. <laughs> Guys and ladies. And ladies. Oh, of course. Mary ladies. Loves the, the sparkly oh, mask. Well, sparkly, yes. <laughs> Do I have to turn this on or? Uh, it's it's on. on. It is on. Okay. Pull it close. He almost looks presidential. Ways of tonight, God. Yeah, he kind of does. He does. Yeah, you look presidential. He kind of does. Oh, no, now you look nerdy. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the promotion. <laughs> Going to run that through the computers for a vote? Um, everybody, I just want to thank the town board for having me. Uh, it's been a crazy year. I'm to tell any of you that. Um, and uh, it's been the same way up on the county. But just starting out, I just wanted to uh, take a moment to thank all our veterans in uh, today's Pearl Harbor Day. And, uh, you know, that's it's very near and dear to us. We didn't have an attack from then until... 2001 that was similar and uh, in that type so uh, so it's it's uh, never forget um, and uh, with that I'll also dive right into the budget like I said like this year it's, it's no like no other year um, all things considered though the county's uh, we're, we're hanging in there we're hanging in there pretty good if, uh, you know in my opinion um, you know, we had to transform the county government, just like you guys had. Everybody had to morph this year. Um, but uh, with all the departments, they, with what they did and the bouncing around, um, they all need to be commended for their uh, timeless efforts in 2020. You know, we were cross-training, uh, you know, when DMV shut down, uh, you know, they, they moved a lot of the DMV over to EMS services to take uh, the, to, to the call centers. Um, and, you know, so people were getting shuffled around and, uh, you know, we were keeping it going. And uh, so that was a, a big part of it. Um, and uh, good news is that the county's unassigned fund balance is just under $55 million. It's $54.9 million. And, um, and that's the money that we have in reserve. Um, and uh, actually, Moody's investors... This is a quote from Moody's. The county's not susceptible uh, at this time to, uh, uh, as a, in, at this time, the county is not susceptible to any immediate credit risk uh, related to the coronavirus. So that's great. That keeps up our uh, our bond rating where it is um, when we go out and bond, and, and uh, you know we we get more favorable rates. Uh, the county avoided layoffs and. Uh, you know, we saved through, we, we had an early retirement uh, initiative uh, with the, and also a furlough program that saved uh, over $2 million. And that was, uh, you know, a number of people took early retirement, and then some people took a two month furlough in, in uh, June and July. I, I thought that what a wonderful thing if you were, you know, one of the 2,400 employees of the county and you had an, an opportunity to, uh, to take a little time off and, and all the craziness. Um, but that saved $2 million. Uh, also, we saved, uh, we had over 280 vacancies. And, uh, you know, over the last three years, it, it's, you know, people have been, you know, we certainly were replacing and hiring, but so, a lot of times we were, they were, again, they were morphing along the way and, 
and, and just like anywhere else, people were having to do more with less and, and with the, uh, and that's the same with the workers. But um, so with the 280 vacancies, pretty much the, we, we took them out and that saved $13 million. Um, and uh, <clears throat> the thing is that once we can try to get back to normal, and, and I'm hoping that after the vaccines come out and everybody can get them, you know, who knows if it's 20, late 2021 or 22, that as we need, then we can go back and refund them again. But right now we had to do that, we had to save it. We were in the hole about $20 million. Um, and, uh, you know, through all these various methods, we were still able to um, uh, come in with our budget and actually the budget was three million dollars less than last year's budget we stayed under the tax cap um and uh we um you know it's it's i guess we last year the budget was 817 million or so and this time it was like 813 a little bit more so so we uh we did all of these great things and kept it in there and an amazing thing, too, is that we voted, adapted the budget last uh, Thursday and in a true bipartisan uh, effort. Um, throughout the budget hearings and everything, as you know, things get massaged and moved around and everything. And we really, we made two small changes to the budget, the county executive's budget. Um, the county executive was fine with it, and it was very, very minimal. Um, I think the medical ex or the the uh, yeah the medical examiner needed a new X-ray machine. The other one was in pieces, and it's very old, and they needed that. And uh, you know, we also put someone else in uh, part. I think uh, well, we put in another person at the uh, tourism, and I'll get to that in a second. And I know that you, we've got uh, are going to move this along here. Um, so we voted it in 21 to zero. Democrats, Republicans working together. And we didn't make that, you know, two small, small changes, and that was uh, that was it. So, right. um, on the tourism front, uh, we have this new position. But right now, everybody, you know, we're getting a lot of activity for people looking into Orange County to come up to Orange County. Um, and in and one of the industries, as as you know, and I know, I think Tony, you dealt with Amanda a little bit but uh, is the film and television industry. And uh, she had a list that was probably five or six shows that were coming here. We've got sound stages that have popped up around the county over the last couple of years. Um, and unfortunately, one was right next to that big fire in Middletown two weeks ago, and that building burnt. And they were just getting some traction, just moving along, and, um, and then that happened. But there's another one up in New Windsor, and I think one in Newburgh, and they're booked. They're booked now. Netflix is coming up, uh, different uh, programs. I think there's one with Ben Stiller. And, uh, you know, she put the budgets of some of these projects that are that are looking to come. It was like 100. What was it? Yeah. It, wow. it, I think it was uh, on her list was, you know, that's, we're not going to see that, but it's $277 million worth of uh, television and film products that, uh, of uh, production companies that want to come here. So that part of the county is looking bright. That all brings in tax dollars. Um, we just, uh, there was three properties that have been for sale up in Newburgh, the American Legion Mill and the Masonic Lodge, um, and the YMCA that's been on the, on the, on the block for, uh, for a while now. And we just, uh, we're, we're getting close for a deal. And it would be a hotel and spa and believe it or not a bowling alley in the bottom of one of the buildings and uh, you know so uh, so it's a lot of good things happening um, also today and I can get you the information for uh, the tourism just launched a new website it's really looking great they it only launched about three o'clock today or two o'clock today so I'll get you the information but um, Last month on the old website, we had over 114,000 uh, visits. Um, the county is also doing the marketing with those, uh, with the programs to try to attract people, um, and, and mainly for, to come up and visit and or to bring your business. But uh, what we have is um, they, uh, 
they were advertising, I think they're doing digital, all the way from kind of the 95 corridor, DC, Philly, and uh, New York City. And they're saying that if people uh, drive for more than three hours, they're most, they want to stay, 85 or so percent want to stay over. So, so that's uh, all good for us, for the county with the tax base, because we all took hits on the taxes this year. Um, and uh, I guess I'm just going to go into a little bit with health. And, uh, you know, as you know, this, we're spiking here. Uh, Friday we had 262 new cases um, of coronavirus. The, the rolling 10-day uh, average is uh, 150 for the last 10 days. So, uh, so that's really on the, on the move. <coughs> um, and then, uh, so just please, uh, I'm going to say it just like everybody else, wear your mask, wash your hands, and uh, properly distance uh, <coughs> the holidays coming up. Uh, my last points I want to make is the community development block grants. Um, <clears throat> the town of Monroe, the village of Monroe, we've, we've uh, secured money over the last uh, couple of years. And Tony, you want some water? <laughs> um, so, uh, so we've benefited here in, in the town of Monroe and the village, um, even right in this All building here. Um, I think we did, we did some work here and then also up at the senior center. Uh, we, part of the CARES Act from 2020 is uh, we're going to put an amendment in to apply for an additional $1.9 million. Um, and what that's going to be used for is to help county residents that are in uh, rears. It's, uh, what's it called, the rental and... Uh, the rental mortgage and utilities assistance program. So as we get going, we can um, also try to bring some of that those dollars to Monroe too to help people get back in good graces with their landlords to starve off some uh, mortgage problem and foreclosures. So uh, and that would be the second payment that we got out of the CARES Act. The first one um, was a lot. That was uh, I think we gave about a million dollars. We got a million dollars for the county. That was for PPE um, and some administrative costs for community development uh, group, and uh, that was the PPE that that he uh, that emergency services was getting out to the towns, the villages, all of the when you know everybody was getting fire departments, you know Brendan Casey and uh, Dominic Green, you know and Alan Mack, they were getting it out to every corner of the county. So with this. Um, the, yeah, yeah. So it was fortunate that the community development, you know, because we still had our projects with the municipalities, but this money became available. And uh, Nicole Anderson, who's uh, the director up there, she jumped right on it. And uh, so that's great. So, you know, with that being said, um, I think that we're in good shape. We, we uh, you know, financially and uh, Mentally, hopefully, going into the new year, whenever it is, and we can, and the and the tourism. I know you guys are all real big on it. Monroe's jumping on that and getting a lot of uh, the new businesses coming in. Thank you, Mr. Scancarella, and company. Um, and uh, so I, I have an optimistic view going forward. Um, but uh, so with that, I just want to really say uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to everybody. Uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, Kwanzaa. Uh, I just hope that it, and pray that everybody has a healthy New Year. And, um, you know, we'll see you all next year and, and get back at it. So unless, does anybody have any questions or anything? Or? Great no, stuff. No, no. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Pete. Thanks, Mary. I'll see you guys. Very presidential, Pete. <laughs> okay, uh, next item up.
Okay, is that better? Okay. So uh, essentially what this is, is uh, the Association of Towns created a, uh, a guideline for all highway responders to be all highway personnel department employees to be first responders through a resolution. They're the ones that are going to have to clear the roads. We don't want them to get tied up uh, with isolation and quarantines uh, that may be premature. Uh, recently, Deer Park had 10, that, 10 highway workers that were out for 14 days, and Blooming Grove had seven. So uh, in order to alleviate any possible emergencies that might arise from a snowstorm, ice storm, or, or something else having to do with the highways, uh, this resolution will uh, enable them to come to work. Uh, they will still practice, you know, proper distancing, one person in a truck, masks on, uh, obviously, when they're coming in. So I'll read the whereases. Uh, now, therefore, be it resolved that all whereas clauses are hereby incorporated by reference as those set forth in full herein. Section 2, the Town of Monroe Town Board designation recognizes all employees of the highway of the town highway department as first responders. Section three, the town supervisor and any other officer or employee as directed by the town supervisor shall take any and all necessary action to carry out the provisions of this resolution. And section number four, this resolution shall be effective immediately. Uh, so I would like to make that motion. On a second. Any questions, comments regarding it? I think it's a great idea because being out for, even if CDC recommendations are going down to 10 days or seven days, that's a long time. If there's a yeah. snowstorm, we, we need those. <laughs> yeah, there, there was discussion with the county and uh, Executive Newhouse said, you know, there will be mutual aid available for us, but, you know, what happens if two towns on different sides of the county get affected? You know, then you're going to have to get your neighbor to handle your roads and maybe the county could handle a few, and then the neighbor on the other side, on the other side of the county. So it, it would have became, became a nightmare if we got a good, uh, a good hit with a, you know, a foot or 18-inch snowstorm. So, so this works out. It might give them preference with receiving a vaccine, I would imagine, also. Yes, it will. And that, that's something that obviously will keep them on the job. And, and yes. Yeah, that's a real positive aspect of that also. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's uh, call call that question. Ingham I. Lone I. Cardone I. Ankerello I. Good night. Okay, so moved. Uh, item uh, 9.3, Water District 1, Emergency Repairs. Mary, you want to go over that? Um, briefly, Water District 1 had a valve that was giving them problems, and Pete had to go and clamp another a pipe that was leading to the valve. They were hoping with working with the village they could find the valve and just get it done in one day, but it seems to have turned into a major project. Uh, there were other things that needed to be done, so um, too bad John's not here. Uh, he will tell us exactly what date they're going to go out and make those repairs, but it's an emergency. It has to be done. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> Mike's got no Mike's water. <laughs> Mike's not going to have water. There or, is. Uh, and you just, don't water for Christmas? <laughs> we're hoping you're going to have water forever. So. Yeah. <laughs> and just well, so that's, you, your, your, your fund balance is very rich, so it's not going to affect any well, taxes. You know, so. thank, thank, thank yeah. that's, a, that's a good thing, Mr. Yeah, no, we're, absolutely. we're glad to hear that up on High Ridge Road. That's a great thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I understand that this is going to result in a, in a full shut, shutdown at some point to do this, and, and that's understandable. So. Um, well, listen, we've all known, and, and Mary, I mean, we, we've known a lot of these districts have been long, long neglected from a, from a maintenance uh, and, and upgrade standpoint. So, um, you know, you, you, you know, Water District 12 is the poster child for neglected districts over the years, and, and, you know, you live there. So, you know, we'll get there, and I appreciate your attention to it, and I know that my, my neighbors do up there as well, so thanks. So just having the, the door replaced is minor compared to having these valves replaced. The you know yes. uh, you know a door you could live without yeah. to the to the uh, pump building, but to have these valves replaced is really a major improvement that has to be done. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I know there's been there's been motors, there's been you know, the expansion Pumps. tank. There's just 
you know, I've been in that, that pump house and it's a mess. I don't, I don't mean that the guys keep it a mess. I just mean it's a mess from years of, you know, again, uh, deferred or lack of maintenance. When, when was the last time that was updated? No idea. Well, because there were a lot of projects on Rye Hill Road for many years, it was kicked down the road, so to speak, thinking that when some of those projects would be developed, they would then make the improvements. Uh, going back to when I was on the planning board, there was a parcel of land that was going to be utilized and that current pump house would no longer be used because we were gonna get a parcel from the developers. So again, these projects haven't come to fruition and um, we have to make the repairs. There's no getting around right. it. Yeah, I mean, there probably hasn't been anything done there since the early 2000s, late 90s. Wow. Yeah, so. Well, yeah. I don't have a, an exact dollar amount. Uh, do we need uh, an exact dollar amount? Uh, or just no, I, I don't think we're going to know because it's an emergency situation right. and there's going to be things that are going to come up during the process of the repairs. So right. uh, I, I want to say it was somewhere in the neighborhood of about twenty to 25000 Because I think one valve is over 4500 yeah. yeah. So we just need to make a motion to allow Water District 1 to have emergency repairs. Okay. I'll make that motion. I'll second. All the question. Bingham, I. Cardone, I. Cardone, I. Scancarello, I. And I, with the uh, understanding that I am a resident mm -hmm. of that district, and, uh, and as such, I just want to make sure there's no conflict of interest there. No. All right. You'll get to dirty water, though. <laughs> Well, it's my tax money too, so it's not like I'm <laughs> voting to spend my tax money. So, Councilman, feel free to jump uh, and, a mile up the road and come use my uh, shower. And, 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 I'll be happy to. And, and I just want to acknowledge that uh, uh, Mr. Nugent could not be here this evening. Uh, he had two meetings tonight, and uh, we were blessed with Alex Shaw tonight, who is yes. uh, extremely capable and probably more well versed in the uh, in law <laughs> than uh, Mr. Nugent. So. Happy to have you here. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Item 9.4. That's a, a brick FEMA grant application. Uh, so that's uh, with respect to the generators that we're applying for. Uh, brick stands for Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities. Uh, so we have to commit uh, to match funds, which are $65,218.75. That would be, that would be the max. Uh, to complete the pro, com pro, proposed project outlines in the application. And that was for uh, five generators, which would service not only our town hall, senior center, uh, and uh, dial a bus area, but it would also include uh, some of the uh, pump stations so that we wouldn't have to get emergency generators up there like we did this past time. And yes, Mr. McGinn, Water District number one pump house is one of the generators that we're trying to, you know. Good, good. Great news. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful news. Yeah. So we didn't get approved yet, but we had yeah, to yeah, pass Yeah, no, yeah, that's this. great. So, so the town would have to have put up matching funds of that amount, basically. Yes. Yeah. And that would be in next year's budget anyway, right? Uh, no, most likely 20, what's that? Fund balance problem? Yeah, well, it's in the fund balance, but I don't, I don't see this. Uh, coming to fruition to maybe Please. early 2022, so maybe sooner. Maybe don't, yeah. for, don't forget, like I said, a lot of those, a lot of that grant money's being held up. Yes. So it'll go. It'll rush through as soon as things get released. So we'll see. So uh, uh, you want to make that motion, Vic? I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Okay. Any other? No. Oh, <laughs> it's sorry. <ready> vote. <laughs> That's again from. Uh, Grant writers. Yeah, Millennium. Yep. yep. Awesome. Good job there, Rick. Call the question. Bingham, I. Cologne, I. Cardone, I. Anchorilla, I. Again, I. Okay, so moved. Uh, item 9.5. Uh, Mike, I'd just like if you could just do a little research. We don't have to pass anything tonight uh, regarding the assessor's car lease. It was in the budget this year. We kind of like tabled it after after their car <laughs> broke down. <laughs> oh, they were using the, uh, yeah, the old, the Jeep, right? Yeah, they were yeah, using yeah, the old yeah. Jeep, so. Yeah. yeah, I mean, listen, I'll reach out to Enterprise. Uh, you know, Rick, feel free. I know you're, uh, you have some, have some uh, expertise in this area, but I'll, I'll reach but, out to Enterprise. 
May I make a suggestion? Sure. Okay. Um, we were approved for those um, plug stations for Town Hall as well as the, uh, the village. So we can get another grant when we, if we get an electric car. Just keep that in mind. I already spoke to Millennium about it. Find out what you know if you can get you the specifics on that. I and, can, you know. Um, in the meantime, I'll reach out to Enterprise and we'll what I'll do is I'll get some prices from the dealer and what we can get from the, uh, the feds. Yeah. All right, sounds good. All right. Great. Do what you do, I'll reach out to Enterprise. And I'll let you know what's going on so yeah. you can make that. Profit. Sounds like a plan. I mean, we do you know that or a pool car just so that you know, you know, the supervisor's always running around in his van there and. You know, yeah, but it, it, if it's all stuff, local, so, you know, you know so, uh, he doesn't have to go around in, uh, in his van. Yes. No one I'm in a Tesla either. It looks like a crazy here. No, no, no. no. All right. Smart car or something. Item 9.6. So I, I believe there was some miscommunication between Brian and I. <laughs> on, on, on this, I thought it was getting sent out to the board on Friday. When I spoke to him this morning, he had not sent it out. So you should have gotten a copy. Of, yeah, okay. So you should have got a copy of the uh, lease and conveyance of 15 Lake Street, uh, the DeAngelis De building. So what what I would like to do is is pass this resolution so that we can move forward with the appropriate uh, notifications in the paper uh, and any other minor changes that may arise that the board will be notified on but for for the most part it's a uh, it's a sale of the Angeles Hall for $218,000. There's a year lease associated with it. Uh, that those monies uh, in that lease will be credited towards the purchase price. Uh, there's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of three to four hundred thousand dollars that will have to be invested in this property to get it to to, to where it needs to be. Uh, and I, I don't want to name the name. You, you can see it there. I don't want to name the name of the gentleman until we have a signed contract. Is, is, that, is that okay, Council? We could just... We're not getting we're not, not getting you. He's not getting you. Sorry. Since you're approving the lease and the sale subject to the contract being approved in a final form by council, you don't have to mention specifics today as far as parties or anything like that. Okay. All right. So, so, uh, so it would it would read like this, and I'd, I'd like to obviously second it, have it seconded for discussion in case anybody had any questions. So it says, uh, now therefore be resolved, section one, all whereas clauses are hereby incorporated by reference as those set forth in full herein. Section two, the town hereby declares itself lead agency in this unlisted action. And after having reviewed paragraphs one, two, and three of the short form, environmental form, and hereby adopts a negative declaration. Section three, the town board hereby authorizes the town supervisor to execute any and all documents necessary to effectuate the lease and conveyance documents in a final form approved by town special counsel. Section four, pursuant to town law section 90, the town clerk is hereby directed to post and publish a notice within 10 days of this resolution, setting forth the date of the adoption of this resolution contained in an abstract of the resolution and specifying that such resolution was adopted subject to permissive referendum. Section five, the resolution shall be effective immediately. Uh, let, let, let me just say this. Sal has, has worked extremely hard on this, uh, and it's been a, a roller coaster ride getting to this point uh, in, in, in many ways. And I, I think that this is, this is a, a real, would be a real economic boost based on what the anticipation of the 
uh, new owner wants to uh, make this, and it's going to be a, a real viable business in, in, in the village. And uh, it's, it's a town, town building, and it will be a town building for at least the next year. Uh, so uh, anybody, I, I'm going to make that motion. So is there... Why don't you second it, Sam? I'll second it. Okay. Yeah, you make the motion. You, yeah, you make the motion. I'll make that motion. Okay, I'll second it. All right. Any questions? Uh, just, Sal, you've done an outstanding job. Again, I mean, imagine, we're, you, you, you're bringing in business at a time like this when most businesses are closing up into this town, and I can't thank you enough for all your hard work on this, because we, we worked on, on a few times in getting this done, and, and you finally pulled through something on this. Yeah, this, is, this is by far the, the, the best guy we could have gotten in this yeah. building. As far as I'm concerned, you know, He's a proven, successful guy in Orange County. Um, I think he's going to do a phenomenal job. And he gives, he's giving, he'll give Monroe more credibility, especially in the village. Um, so it is, it's, to me, it's just, a, it's a home run. I think it's, it's going to be a great opportunity. Moving forward, I think Orange County will begin to notice Monroe more so because of, of this deal. Well, thanks for your efforts again, Sal. Absolutely. Thank you. All the question? King of I. Cologne I. Cardone I. Skankarello I. Again I. Okay, so move. Good, good work. Yep, nice work. Roger. What's that? Sorry, I just wanted to mention before you move on, that since this is, this resolution deals with selling public property or municipal property. You have to have property, a public hearing? It is, it is subject to a permissive refer referendum pursuant to town law, so if any member of the public wants to do that, they would have to do, they would have to take after the resolution has been published as as required by law by the uh, village clerk or by the town clerk okay. oh do we we're we required to have a public hearing for this no it, not no not right now not right I'm now just, right right i just want to make sure that we disclose to the public that it's subject to a permissive referendum that's all. okay all right and it was it was stated in the resolution so in section four at the end right. yeah okay all right Call the question? We just we did. We did. Yeah. Did we call the question? Yeah. All right. We're in. So we're good. All right. All right, sorry. Item 9.7, uh, dog control services, the IMA with Woodbury. Uh, uh, we, we need to approve the intermissible agreement between the town of Monroe and town of Woodbury for dog control services. Everything stays the same in the contract. Uh, with the exception of the price, which had a small increase to $26,650 per year. So I'll, uh, you made a motion? motion. I'll clone a second. I second that for discussion, Mr. Sure, sure. I just, um, I, I know that we, we've kind of talked about this in the past, that we kind of need, whether it be the, the, the uh, animal control, the dog control officer from, from Woodbury or someone that can, um, take immediate action when we have a vicious or or uh, potentially threatening animal that has you know dog or, or whatever that has caused injury to a person or, or another pet that there can be some type of immediate action taken so can we can we talk to them about that and see if that's something we can work so, into it so we're right now it's me I'm the one that's been doing this uh, we we had an impound two, we had an impound two dogs last Sunday. Okay. Uh, thank God John Sherney was on the scene, as was a uh, retired cop, uh, someone with some guts, unlike yourself, Mr. McGinn, <laughs> who, who actually who who, who actually uh, it was two pit bulls that attacked a service golden retriever, uh, and I will tell you that. The, that service golden retriever was as sweet as, as you can get in, in a dog. And uh, the homeowner, uh, the dog's owner, uh, was a former Navy, uh, uh, enlisted, it, he was enlisted in the Navy. It was his service dog, uh, nice family. Uh, the, uh, his father had to be taken uh, to the hospital just to get checked out because he was, you know, Having some breathing issues. Everything's good. I spoke to the uh, his uh, the uh, the dog owner's mom the next day, uh, and they are uh, working on 
uh, whatever they have to do to, to get whatever vet bills and any other bills associated with it. But going, going back to the, and, and, and I'm remiss in the gentleman's name that was the retired cop who started to try to, you know, break it up. And then John Cherney came upon scene and the both of them were able to get the dogs off the other dog. Uh, but it, it was it was it was a little bit of a bloody situation, and uh, thank God everyone's all right. Uh, the dogs were held for I think a period of no more. What's that? Ten days. Well, was she holding him for ten days? The only thing she said was she had mentioned to me, and I, I haven't followed up with her on it since then. After the first day, was that since it was a dog on dog? Uh, it was essentially a 24 to 48 hour holding period. So I'll, I'll follow up with but it yeah, again. She can release. Them. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. Right. But she still does. Right. The, the, and, and that 10 days is normally because of uh, the rabies situation. That dog did. Those two dogs were vaccinated. That was right. Because they came in and got their licenses, I believe, the next day. So. Have one that does not. Right. Well, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll follow up with Alpha. Yeah, yeah, and I just, like you said, I want to make sure that there's someone at the town level. It, uh, we're that, also working with someone right now uh, okay. at, Great. At, at Highway that hopefully we'll be able to do it. We just got to, you know. Okay. Yeah, just, just to kind of put us. We oh, know yeah. That, it yeah. makes things a lot easier. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Very good. Okay, so call a question there. King of I. Cardone and I. Cardone and I. Good night. Okay, so moved. Uh, next up is the IMA for dial a bus services between the town of Woodbury and the town of Monroe. Uh, we're going to be renewing that contract, and that contract is going to be $5,675. Uh, that's for uh, some small services, and there are some additional costs that uh, fees that uh, the town gets paid on that as well. So, call the question. Am I? Cardone, I. Cardone, I. Anquilla, I. McKenna, I. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, during the Corona situation here, uh, the Corona COVID uh, nineteen situation, uh, I'd like to renew the shared services for the intermunicipal agreement between the town of Monroe and the town of Warwick for consulting services for the town of Monroe dial bus program for the period January 1, 2021, through June 30th, 2021. Uh, this is something that uh, Jennifer Crover has been doing for us through Warwick. Uh, every penny of this amount, the $8,000 associated with it, will be reimbursed through uh, federal or uh, state monies uh, during the COVID uh, crisis. So we've done this for two years. This is our... I think these six months, uh, as, as the conversation went with Dom and I, will probably be the last. Uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll move on and Dom will uh, Those take contractual costs were, were, uh, ref well, were paid over the last few? The, the last two years, they contract, the contract was 16000 This past year uh, was reimbursed, uh, but the first year was not. So uh, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Seconded by Councilwoman Bingham. Uh, call the question. Bingham, aye. Cardone, aye. Cardone, aye. Ancarillo, aye. Good night. Okay, so moved. All right. Dial uh, bus. So there's two items on here uh, that we have to approve this evening. Uh, the first one being the town hall parking lights, okay? I have tried multiple times. This has been going on for like three months to get people to quote on it. Uh, I have only been able to get one person to quote on it. And I think it has to do with the system that we have here that also relays to the parking lot lights. It's a Lightronic system, I believe is the name of it. Uh, it's a system that all these fixtures have home runs down to a control box downstairs. Uh, so right now we're working on that center chandelier in addition to the 
parking lights outside. So there were, we received three quotes uh, for three different options for the lights outside. Uh, the f I'm just going to try to look them up here. First quote, quote was for $8,500 just to uh, retrofit the out, and I'll, I'm going to send them to you as well, just to retrofit the outside uh, parking lights. I think there's 17 of them. The second quote was to uh, bring in new fixtures outside, new arms that come off, and that was 15.5, I believe. And the other, there was another company, uh, Rab Electric, that, that bid on that too, and that was 18.5. Now, Rab Electric's price was uh, included a five year warranty on the fixture, the lamps, and everything associated with it. So Sandro Alessandro, who is uh, the one that, that obtained all these quotes, his recommendation was just go with the $8,500, you'll get lights outside. Uh, Councilman McGinn brought up to me this weekend the situation uh, with not having lights outside, we have court going on and whatnot. Uh, so I, I would like to approve this this evening for $8,500 and Sandro can get on it first thing tomorrow and get hopefully this done within the next week. Yeah, he, he does most of the work in, most of the work in here, yeah, he's, you know, yeah. uh, he's fair. He's a single, single operator, yep. uh, sole operator. That's so right. yeah, yeah, I mean the, the big cost in that, in that $8,500 is to rent a lift, yeah. you know, because you've got to get up there. Up. It needs lights. Yeah, we need lights. Light. And it, it's, the wires have to it's be upgraded so that they become LED, LED compatible. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's something that it has got to be done. And, and I will tell you, the reason I had held off on this for so long and, and didn't push it was we were waiting for the lighting conversion for the town. This was going to be included in it, but then when the solar farm got fired up and the savings for the conversion weren't going to be what we anticipated after we invested all that money into the conversion, it didn't make sense to do the conversion at that time when we could do the conversion piecemeal, rather all at once, at no charge with O&R. So it's uh, one of those, oh, what a tangled web we weave, you know? Yeah, but I, I've seen the difference in, in some of the places where they have replaced with those LEDs. It's amazing. It, yeah. It's a lot brighter. Yeah. Well, this is no a brightness out brighter. there now. Oh, it's, no, it's dark yeah. out right. there. It's dark right now, but once you get those LEDs in. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so if, uh, if I, I will make a motion to uh, approve the $8,500 cost of the uh, retro, uh, retrofitting with LED lamps outside parking lot lights uh, with Alessandro Electric. Hold on a second. That's for 8,500, right? 8,500, 8, yeah. Any other discussion? I'll did, you want to make, did you want to make that a little bit more in case he runs into incidentals? Or? I don't think so, but. I mean. No? Right. No, leave it at 8,500. If we have to, back. yeah, we can always come back. back. Yeah. 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 All right, call a question. Bingham I. Cologne I. Cardone I. Gancarello I. McKinn I. Okay. And then the last thing on here, uh, and the reason, you know, not, not that all these things are last minute, we could always have a Zoom meeting, which we, we may have to have on, an, uh, on, the, uh, on another item later in the month. But so uh, the current New York State contract for trucks expires December 10th. Uh, over the weekend uh, and last week, uh, John Sherney uh, and George Kaiden were going back and forth with uh, Amthors and Arkell. Arkell provides the chassis and Amthors provides all the uh, Equip, equipment that's retrofitted on the chassis. 
okay? Yep. Yeah, so, you know, the, 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 the wing plow, the plow, all the, you know, the different... Hydraulics. And, yeah, hydraulics, engine, everything. So, I'm just trying to bring up, so I give you the... Okay, so... Final pricing on this. Now, mind you, last time we bought a tandem truck, it was two hundred and almost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so the tandem uh, on the Agendaga Onondaga contract eight nine nine six is two hundred twenty-two thousand nine hundred eighteen dollars and six cents. Okay, and. The single axles, which we're going to need one tandem and two single axles. The single axles are $191,286.77. Now, th there's over 20000 in savings from Friday through today because George did a lot of negotiating over the weekend. That's cheap for those jobs. Yeah, no, it is. And the problem is there's no no sales out there because of COVID. Because there are trucks out there that were basically ordered and never never got to the point of production and there was no sales. So in other sales. words, they got an excess of chassis. So they got an excess of everything, I think, so. Because that's cheap for those trucks. Yeah, no, no, I know it is. It, it's, uh, I mean. I, I thought I'll, it'd be a lot more than a, than a quarter million. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you that the equipment for the tandem is 107,200, and the equipment for the uh, single axles is $93,000. So, I, I mean, we bonded last month uh, almost $900,000 to bring these in, and we're, I think we were at $605,000. Uh, so, great price. So, yeah, so it's a great price. It's something, it's something we need. Uh, I'm leaving in five. Bye. Uh, it's something we need, and I, I, I just, you know, uh, for the safety of the highway workers, I think Grab it's something it. we, it's all we I have can to tell do. You. Yeah, I forgot how many years you said some of the trucks that highway's using, some they're way the, past their life expectancy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, way past, so. All right, so, uh, so the uh, motion would read like this. Uh, approval on the Onondaga, Onondaga, sorry, on the Onondaga contract 8996 to purchase a tandem truck for $222,918.06 and two single axle trucks for $191,286.77. Uh, we need to make a PO out to Navistar Inc. at 399 Albany Shaker Road, Suite 202, Loudonville, New York. So... Uh, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Question? King am I. Oh, and I. Oh, no, and I. Skankarillo, I. Can I? Okay, so moved. Uh, I apologize. I, I have to run. It's my happy birthday, Mom, where, wherever you are. It's my mother in law's birthday tonight, and you get going, I'm, I'm late for cake, so. Yeah, well, I, I figured we'd get out of here quick, but, you know. Legislators have a tendency to talk long, you know. <laughs> Love you, Pete. <laughs> Especially with good news. Uh, Did anybody sign up for public comments? Ward Brower. Sorry, I have to leave, Ward. You come on up. Thank you. I'll let her know. All the best, Ward. Thank you. This thing on. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Are we ready? We are ready, sir. Okay. Boy, Broward, private citizen. Uh, don't have anything really pressing other than expressing my goodwill so everyone have a happy holiday and a happy new year. Uh, Mike, I'm glad we're moving along on that 14. Yep. That's a positive thing. Self and Mary are, uh, are on it. Yeah. Oh, right. Make sure you get that. That's, that's my, that was my main concern when coming to the meeting. Yeah, we, we should have a, a draft by the end of the week. It'll, you know, by the next, by the 11th, you know, we'll hone in on some of the things we'd like to see 
of course, will be subject to public hearings like any other mm. uh, zoning change. And um, you know, after that, I, I think we should have it. You know, maybe a couple meetings to to um, hone in after the public comment to get you know the law where it needs to be, and uh, or the revisions where we need to be. And we should be. It's been a long time coming. And yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> lots Hang in of, there. <laughs> lots of balls up in the it's air. Coming. You know. I know. Thank you. Anyway. No, 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 no problem. We'll 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 get there with it. Take care. Have, Have a good wonderful year. holiday. Thank you, Ward. Rick, you want to jump in there? Maybe. Okay. Anything else? That's it. So I guess that's it. That we, we don't have any executive session. I don't believe. Right? Did you have anything, uh, mm -hmm. Councillor? No. Go anything? Ahead. I don't have anything. Today. All right. All right. Great. So uh, I need a motion to, uh, to end our wonderful meeting. I will make a motion to adjourn. So I will second. second. Okay, call the question. Bingham, I. Cologne, I. Scancarello, I. And I. Happy, uh, happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas.